You will occasionally encounter women with hyperprolactinemia. This segment provides a basic approach to help you know when to order a serum prolactin level and how to interpret and treat abnormally high prolactin levels. Prolactin secreting microadenomas are the most common tumor of the pituitary and hyperprolactinemia that results can cause menstrual irregularity, amenorrhea, or galactorrhea, and is a condition you will encounter from time to time. Knowing how to differentiate this from other causes of hyperprolactinemia and what the therapeutic approaches are for these patients is the focus of this pearl cast. Prolactin is made by lactotrophs, located in the lateral area of the anterior pituitary, as you can see in this drawing. Prolactin is regulated through inhibition from the hypothalamus by dopamine, designated DA, coming from that area, and it, po it is positively regulated by TRH, which is thyrotropin releasing hormone. Understanding these regulatory relationships will help you remember the causes of hyperprolactinemia. Normal serum prolactin levels range from 5 to 20 nanograms per ml. When would it be appropriate to measure prolactin in one of your patients? Well, the first would be in a woman with irregular menstrual cycles, since prolactin can be a primary cause for amenorrhea or uh, irregular cycles. The second would be women who experience galactorrhea. And in the third case, you might want to measure prolactin in a woman who is experiencing infertility. Since prolactin is one of six essential laboratory tests for the evaluation of the female partner, along with TSH, FSH, estradiol, DHEAS, and testosterone. As shown in this figure, milk globules can be seen in a microscopic image of the secretions taken from a woman with galactorrhea. What causes elevated prolactin to be present? Prolactin is produced by the lactotrophs in the anterior pituitary and the most common cause is a prolactin secreting adenoma. As shown here, the definition of a microadenoma is a tumor that is 10 millimeters or less, while a macroadenoma is greater than 10 millimeters in size. Other pituitary hypothalamic tumors might have a mass effect, as shown here, which is a Rathke's duct cyst. The mechanism for mass effect likely has to do with interference of dopamine delivery from the hypothalamus to the pituitary, and that, in turn, elevates prolactin level secretion by the lactotrophs. Other important causes of prolactin secretion need to be appreciated as well. One of the most common mistakes is to, reg is to measure a prolactin level in pregnancy and assume that it is abnormal. A pregnancy test should always be done when a prolactin level is elevated. Certain drugs, including neuroleptics, opiates, or antidepressants, can raise prolactin levels. Prolactin levels might be elevated uh, with no cause identified. Mild PCOS can cause prolactin levels to be elevated. Breast stimulation or breast implants lead to reflex oxytocin stimulation that can lead to prolactin elevations. Hypothyroidism causes hyperprolactinemia in up to 20% of cases due to the elevation of TRH. Uncommon causes would include chronic renal failure or patients requiring dialysis, and trauma or irradiation to the pituitary could be a cause for elevated prolactin as well. Treatment involves primarily medical management, although surgery still plays a role. For medical management, bromocryptine, which is a dopamine agonist, is used 2.5 milligrams at bedtime. This works to restore menses in 80 to 90 percent of cases, although a larger dose may be required. A more recent addition to our armamentarium of medical treatments would include cabergoline, which is used at 0.25 to 
to 0.5 milligrams twice a week. Surgery is reserved for cases that don't respond to medical approaches and may be important, especially in cases where there's a mass effect. Observation is okay for women with hyperprolactinemia, especially with microadenomas, along with birth control pills to avoid the hypoestrogenic side effects like bone loss. In pregnancy, where prolactin-lowering drugs may be contraindicated, monitoring the pituitary tumors may be necessary as these can grow during pregnancy. Baseline visual field assessment might be considered as a good place to start early in pregnancy since changes due to optic nerve compression can be appreciated if the tumor grows. In hypothyroid-related elevations in prolactin, the prolactin will often return to normal once the hypothyroidism is adequately treated. In cases where psychogenic drugs are the major cause for the elevated prolactin, it should, re it should be remembered that treatment with dopamine agonists might interfere with the therapeutic efficacy of these medications. Working with the patient's psychiatrists or other health care providers is essential in finding solutions, including the possibility of switching to other medications that do not interfere with prolactin secretion. I hope this has been a helpful review for this topic. Hyperprolactinemia is relatively easy to diagnose and treat if you remember the signs and symptoms. And also remember to check a prolactin level when the need arises.